military option was going to be put back on the table, that our policy is simply this, to denuclearize entirely North Korea. North Korea. As soon as Donald Trump became U.S. president, he sent Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis to the region to announce that the policy of strategic patience with North Korea was over. That the military option was going to be put back on the table, that our policy is simply this, to denuclearize entirely North Korea. Until such time as they do that, then we are going to be moving towards economic sanctions, maximum pressure, isolation of the regime, and also having a military option on the table as a, as a last resort. The Trump administration has successfully brought about new wide-ranging UN sanctions against the North Korean regime. But as in the past, such moves require help from Beijing. And the reason is simple, it's money. Uh, China controls 90 to 95 percent of the Korean economy. They have the land border with North Korea. They control the ocean and the sea around it if they desire to. China could shut down North Korea instantly. General Keene agrees that a diplomatic solution depends on involving China. China is completely complicit here. They tolerated North Korea having nuclear weapons. They tolerated North Korea having ballistic missiles. They tolerated North Korea developing intercontinental ballistic missiles. Despite China's condemnation of Pyongyang's latest nuclear and missile activities, it hopes to avoid a collapse of the North Korean regime and the refugee influx across the border. But some experts argue that without China's help in solving the problem, South Korea and Japan like are at risk. Either. What happens if, if South Korea asks the United States to return nuclear weapons to the peninsula? Or they say, we need our own nuclear program. I mean, how could you deny that to them? Japan, which has already reinterpreted its constitution a bit to at least allow collective self-defense, real collective self-defense, what about perhaps offensive mm -hmm. systems in the face of this threat? Vietnam, you know, where does this stop? China has choices to make in the time ahead. I hope they choose to stand with the rest of the world and the United States and create a diplomatic outcome here. The Trump so, administration uh, is reviewing we'll its we'll China policy. Be it's expected to be complete before the president embarks on a trip to East Asia in November. Yela De Franceschi, VOA News, Washington. You name your position and then we'll ask these folks to... A senior North Korean diplomat has said Pyongyang will not hold talks of any kind with the U.S. Choi Sonny, the regime's director general for North American affairs, said they will not be giving up their nuclear weapons and stressed Washington needs to accept North Korea as a nuclear state. North Korean diplomat Choi Sonny was speaking Saturday in a closed-door session at a conference on non-proliferation in Moscow. She reportedly said Pyongyang will not respond to any proposal for negotiations such as the six-party nuclear talks until the U.S. ends what she called its hostile policy towards Pyongyang. According to an anonymous participant at the session, Che said the North is living under constant threat from the U.S. and that processing nuclear weapons is a matter of life and death for the reclusive state. She added that those threats from the U.S. have made Pyongyang only more certain that it needs nuclear weapons to defend itself. See what happens. Now, with that being said, we're prepared for anything. We are so prepared like you wouldn't believe. You would be shocked to see how totally prepared we are, if we need to be. Uh, would it be nice not to do that? The answer is yes. Will that happen? Who knows? And concluded that Washington has no choice but to accept that North Korea is a nuclear state. Che is North Korea's Director General for North American Affairs, and her remarks on Saturday are in line with those she made at another meeting on Friday, when she delivered a statement to the press. PPR pays nuclear weapons non-negotiable unless the U.S. is prepared to coexist with the nuclear DPRK, because this is the only way to ensure lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula and the stability and security in the Northeast Asia. South Korea's deputy nuclear envoy was also at the conference, as well as several former U.S. officials, prompting speculation that there could be interaction of some kind with Che. Seoul's Yonap News reports that although she is said to have greeted the South Korean diplomat informally, no formal meeting was arranged.
Japan's Asahi Shimbun also reports that she did not respond to a Japanese official's request for a meeting. She did, however, hold separate talks with Oleg Brumistrov, a senior Russian official. Wonjowan, Arigang News.